Okay, um, today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about these. Um, this is going to be more of a technical video. I'm going to show you a little bit about how they work, um, how we set them up, and how we, what information they can gather from our movements, um, and how that is then turned into music and magical stuff. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to set them up. So the first thing we're going to do when we've opened Glover, which is the software we're going to use, I'm just going to say this, um, we're going to add a device, we're going to add a glove, which is this. Uh, I'm just going to give it a name real quick, I'm just going to set up my two gloves, left and right. Um, so if everything, yeah, start that sentence again, if everything is plugged in and working and it's all happy, then when I press auto connect, it finds the glove and it's quite happy, yeah. Um, so there we go. They're both kind of on. So, um, the first thing we're going to want to do um, is calibrate the flex sensors. So, uh, flex sensors are, let me see if I can show you, I don't know how clear they are to see on here. They're the little kind of, these things running down here, which respond to how much kind of bend there is in your fingers from nothing at all to making fists and anything in between. First of all, let's go to my right glove. I'm going to hit calibrate. And I'm just going to make these kind of motions very slowly. I'm just going to run through as many kind of movements as I can. And it's just picking up all that data and working out where the absolute minimums and maximums are for my hands. Everyone's hands are going to move differently. Obviously, one of the things we're exploring uh, with the work that I'm doing with Drake Music is, you know, for people like myself who have restricted motion in their hands, how, um, how it responds to that. And this is obviously one of the most exciting things is, in theory, we can set the gloves within the parameters of somebody's disability or disadvantage in terms of their movement. Um, in a way that you can't do with a real instrument, like you know, you can't make a piano fit better if you can't move your hands in a certain way or whatever. So that's the theory, anyway. So as you can see, if I run through that, if I if there's there's no resistance, then the flex sensors are all the way over here on the left. If I go over here with a fist, they jump over. You can see that some of my fingers don't quite kind of go into a full fist, but I'm guessing probably nobody does exactly. Um, the next section down, we've got orientation. Um, set forwards is really important. Set forwards is just so the glove knows where, like, if you're facing the audience, where that is. It becomes really important. If we have stuff that relies on turning left or whatever, left? I'm sticking with that, left. Um, then you, it needs to know where forwards is, so we're going to set forwards. That becomes really important later. So we've got these three axes. We've got pitch, which is this, up and down, easy enough. Next we've got roll, which is this, turning, you know, rolling your wrist like that, which is trickier with this hand um, than I first thought. And then there's yaw, which is the kind of across axis like that. So those three things can all be used then to control different things, um, whether it's turning a knob in a control, you know, con like turning a filter in Ableton Live or something, or you know, controlling a synth by moving, you know, the pitch, using the pitch to control pitch, um, that sort of thing. So yeah, there's loads we can do that. The next section, um, this stuff is really for feedback and it's really really useful. Um, we can set the colour, which is always the feature when I show people the gloves, that they kind of go, ooh, pretty. That light there, which I can change, how well that shows up on there, I'm not sure, but yeah. You get the idea. Um, apart from the fact that it looks really cool, um, it's actually really useful. We can use that for feedback in terms of like an obvious example would be a red light when you're recording, so it knows that you've gone into 
or you know that you've gone into a record mode so we can set that up um, the next thing we can do we have haptic feedback we've got vibration sensors vibration sensors vibration motors that's a better they don't sense vibration they give it back yeah does that make sense they wibble basically I feel a little buzz in my wrist when I press that button mm -mm -mm. Again, it's another cool bit of feedback. You can use that. Um, one thing Gowan's doing is designing a brilliant little idea, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, a metronome. So we'll have like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, um, which means you don't need a click in your ear. Um, you just get a little tap to keep you in time, which is genius. Um, but yeah, so that's that. In terms of feedback, that's what we've got there. Um, so that's the orientation, the flex sensors. And then probably the most important thing... Oh, hang on, before I get into postures, we've just got this as well. Which is gyro peaks. Um, so you've got a drum hit, which is like a sudden... If it get, gets a sudden jolt, then it knows, oh, I'll treat that as a drum hit. And then you've got um, gyro peaks in the other axes, which if you suddenly move, you can set those off as well, which is quite useful. Um, but then most importantly, probably, is posture training. Um, now what this is, it, postures are, um, like, you're making a fist is a posture, or pointing is a posture. It's a way of, like, holding your hand a shape that says, if I do this, go and do that. Um, so... The way we set these up, there are, as you can see, there's like four kind of sensible ones that are just put in ready to go, which are fist, puppet hand, this is one that Imogen uses, which is really nice and easy to sort of grab a knob or something like that, turn a filter or something, open hand, which is if I've got my hand open, respond, you know, to whatever, and then one finger point, which is quite useful. The important thing, what makes it useful is that it's distinctive from that to that, that you're using things that are very deliberate, that you're not just going to kind of accidentally set a, you know, hit a drum that's, you know, assigned to a posture or whatever. We've got to, of course, train the postures because everyone's hands are different. So I'm going to train the fist. What I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to make a fist and I'm going to hit fist. I'm going to open it up a little bit as well. It's useful to try and grab a bit more information. Now, when I've done that, I'm going to hit Learn Postures. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, of course. Because I haven't done another one yet, it's just going, oh, everything must be fist, because it's got nothing to compare it to. So, let's add another one. Let's add Open Hand. I'm just holding my hand open, and I'm just pressing Open Hand each time. Then I hit Learn Posture. Now, as you can see, it knows, open hand, fist, open hand, fist. From then on, I can add some more, pop it hand, very useful, one finger point. You can just whiz through these, it will remember, as long as you do them in the right order, make the posture, press the button, and keep doing that. You've got forget last posture, which is really useful. Um, that wasn't there when we first went to Imogen's and used the gloves, but it was something we spoke to Adam Stark about, um, and then it cropped up pretty quickly. If my hand is just not quite making the posture and we sample it at the wrong time, we might get a false reading of, of a fist or something. So it's really useful just to have that one step back. So I'm just going to learn all that stuff. So there you go. One finger point open hand, pop it hand, fist. Obviously we can also add, we've got eight slots for custom postures, uh, that's quite common, rock sign. So I'll just throw that in there, we'll custom posture one. See at the moment it thinks that's one finger point because it's got nothing to compare it to. I'm just going to chuck that in. And now it knows that is different to that. There we go. I can rename it, set posture names, there we go. So I'm just going to give that a, uh, a rock sign.
Um, is there anything else? Um, obviously you've got your battery there. Oh, um, so yeah, there's the flex sensors, the orientation, setting forwards, there's the lights, there's the buzzers, there's the postures, and then there are the buttons which are normally there. You can move the button around, it's on a cable, it's difficult to show you without taking the glove off, but I can put the button somewhere else and put it over here and when you close your fingers it might work. I mean might work, as in you might choose to do that, it will work. Um, but it's most convenient to put there on the side of your hand. Um, so yeah, so that's basically how you set them up. Um, so now I'm going to dive in and um, make some music. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we kind of turn all this information into um, music. So we need to create, we need to head from our devices, which we've got set up there. We're going to head over to arrangements, which is kind of where all the, we're going to collect all the if I do this, then do that kind of stuff. We're going to work within scenes, which are like little setups that we can kind of jump in and out of. I'm going to spell drum kit correctly. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is add a mapping input, which is from the glove. We're going to say, we've got all these different things. We've got the flex sensors, so we can add things based on all of the bending of our fingers. We've got orientation, which is like, the pitch, the roll and the yaw. We've got postures. So all of these things can be turned into you know, a thing. If I do this, then do that. Um, because we're using drums, event qualifier, what have I done wrong? Ah, there we go. Because we're using drums, I want to make a drum hit, which is that aggressive kind of strike be the sound. But I don't want it, that to happen every time I move my hand suddenly. So that's why we're going to use a thing called a qualifier. And a fist is a qualifier. So basically what that means is if I'm doing this, also do that. As in, only do this thing if I'm doing both of these. Make sense? So a fist and a drum hit will set that. You can see the little green light. If I do that, there's a little... There we go then this just needs to go somewhere. So I'll create a mapping output. I just want it to be a MIDI note, it's nice and easy. 10. I want it to be my kick drum for now. Note length is just how long that note is. I want it to be quite short. Obviously I don't need a lot of information. I just want to sort of set the sound off. I just plug them in like that. And there we go. That's how we do that. Um, from then on, we can build the whole drum kit. So I'm going to put that together right now. So once I've set up my scene, um, I've got my drum kit now. It's my kick drum there, my snare over here. But also, my snare will behave that way. If I bring this hand to it, it does that, which is great for fills. Got my ride cymbal, a hi-hat. So you can see how we can build a whole drum kit type thing like that. Um, within that arrangement we can add other instruments that we don't need to touch anything, we can just use postures to set them off, like a bass. There it is, I'm just messing around with the sound of the bass. Moving through that for the pitch. By moving columns, I can change the pitch. I can jump up a fourth, I think. And I've got another little. Just a cute little sound on a one finger point. And I can get back to my drums. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see how you can sort of jam and play around with that. Um, this is like really basic Route 1 stuff. Um, I've got a few more cool things um, in mind at the moment, but obviously I'm going to save those for my own live show. I'm not going to let them out of the bag just yet. Um, yeah, I hope that's vaguely useful.